Ja, sehr geehrte Damen und Herren, wir kommen zum nächsten Block auf unserem Grinding Solutions Forum. Ich darf Ihnen Herrn Harzer vorstellen von der Platit. Es geht um das Thema Beschichten und wir freuen uns auf einen sehr spannenden Vortrag. Danke. Kann man mich schon hören? Sehr gut, ja, ich höre mich selber. Hallo zusammen. Ähm ich wechsle dann jetzt auf die Sprache Englisch, denn der Vortrag findet in, in englischer Sprache statt. Um, let me introduce myself. My name is Niklas Harz. I'm working for Platit since July 2020, so it's almost two years now. Um, I'm working in the function of uh, Chief Marketing Officer. And today we would like to give you an overview about exactly where the point is, when it makes sense to invest in your own PVD technology and how you can still add value to your customers and be better than the job coding uh, service provider that you used to uh, have in the past. So about the insights of, of that presentation today, uh, we will answer basically two questions. The first question is, at which point from a financial perspective are you losing money when you use a job coding service provider? Or at which point does it make sense to invest in PVD because you will create a greater cash flow than you used to have in the past? And the other point, again, is how to still be competitive, how to have your own performance plus in comparison to your competition, and again, also the job coding provider that you have been using. First of all, I would just like to use a minute and introduce you to the company of Platit. Um, again, this is not the focus of the presentation, but it's very important for me to give you a little insight about this. The company was founded in 1993. We're about 150 employees uh, in the world. We have facilities in the US, uh, in China, but also in, uh, in Europe, of course, where the headquarter is. Uh, we're providing PVD coding systems for tools and components in various segments and industries. Um, and we're ha we have about 550 uh, to 600 systems installed in the world. Those four selling propositions that you see here, those will accompany us through the whole presentation in the end. Uh, we will go through every of these selling propositions because it's very easy for everyone to put something like that on a presentation like this and give a speech. Um, but in the end, we have to prove what the real selling proposition is uh, from a Platit side. And I would like to really jump into that point right away. Again, just keep it in mind, integrated turnkey solutions is the first point. Um, and I would like to prove that we are really living that at Platit um, right now. So let's say you're a tool regrinder or a tool manufacturer and you're, you're giving away your, your coding uh, to a service provider and you want to do it by yourself in the future. Um, what we're doing here, this is an example of decoding or stripping your coding from a tool that you want to use it again, for example. Um, you have a major problem with cobalt leaching when it comes to stripping or decoding carbide tools. Um, This cobalt leaching is a process that leads to less, adhe uh, less, ad uh, less adhesion of the tool that you're using, uh, and therefore it can break your tool in the end. What we're doing with this one here is we're going from a conventional process with many, many different um, steps into an integrated process. And we're using the decoding system only to go down to a titanium nitride layer, which is the adhesion layer of, of the PVD coding in that case. Um, without attacking the basic substrate material. And in doing that, we're not only integrating the decoding or the stripping into your whole um, PVD coding process, uh, we're also helping you to increase the lifetime of your tool or avoid failure of your tool. So this is the first one. The second uh, selling proposition that we have is that we are providing the most flexible coding system in the world or in general that we provide flexible concepts for PVD coding systems. And the major example, beside all the different coding systems that we are offering here uh, in our standard portfolio, I would like to put some focus on the Pi 411. Because again, you are in the position of making a decision to probably insource your own PVD coding system into your, into your company. And you would like to have the flexi uh, flexibility that if something happens in the future, the market is asking for, for different application, for different coding uh, or different technology, uh, that you need something else. What we're doing with the Pi 411 is we're offering our customers the opportunity to really start 
with an echo version. Echo version of the system means that you are just using cathodes inside the door, and these are all ARC cathodes. ARC processes are used like 90% in, in the tooling industry. So this is your starting point, where you can really start your own PVD coding business. Then, if you want to be faster, for example, you have more tools, more quantity coming in per day. You need to be faster because your customers are asking you uh, to do that. You can install, for example, another um, central cathode in the middle of the chamber. You cannot see it here due to the perspective of the picture, but this gives you, gives you the opportunity to have um, a faster coding process in the end. Or you want to do components, or you want to use uh, sputtering technology inside your coding system. And then, instead of the, the circ that you put in the middle, the central cathode, you can use a skill cathode. And in the end, you can also combine arc process and sputtering processes in the hybrid model version um, of that PVD coding system. So again, this is the second um, selling proposition that I would like to add up uh, with that slide here, because beside the standard coding portfolio that we offer, we're also offering um, specialized coding systems, custom coding systems. And you see um, not only that we are mixing up different technologies here, as I said earlier also with the Pi 411, we're also mixing different dimensions of, of the tools. And this really starts, a very good example um, for us right now is the minting industry, coin minting. There are more than 100 uh, minting facilities in the world for coin minting, either for medals or for really money coins. And we are using a coding system here that is really, really small. 70 millimeter to 250 meter, uh, millimeter diameter of, of plasma volume, right? Or if you want to do something very big like saw blades, for example, you can really go, go up to a diameter of one and a half meters, for example. And, and we are building all that in, in Switzerland. So it's really a combination of different technologies, different processes, but also different, different sizes of coding systems that we're doing here. Good. The third selling proposition that we have is open source technology. What you see here um, is the overview of a coding process. This is called a trace file. So with our machines, as long as you have the know-how, you can really dig deep into, into the different coding processes and do your own research even. So this is really open for everyone. You don't have to use that, but you still have the op opportunity to. And this is very important for someone who is in the business, let's say, for five or 10 years, who wants to be really, really independent and develop something uh, by himself. Good. This is the most important uh, slide for me in, in that presentation today. Because what we are saying is, or our message today is, that the barrier for insourcing your own PVD technology has fallen um, further. That means if you are right now having a specific number of tools that you are coding per month with a job coding provider, or you're spending a certain amount, um, you should be thinking about a PVD coding system if that amount is 125,000 Swiss francs per year. Because from that point, you are losing money. This is really, really important. From that point, all the costs, all the expenses that you have when you put a machine like that into your own facility will be lower than if you use a job coding provider. So this is the starting point. And this is really new because we found a package that we designed that helps you um, to really start earlier with your own PVD coding uh, system investment. Um, just for everyone who is not calculating in, in Swiss francs, Euro and Swiss francs currently is one-to-one, -one, so it's pretty easy. You don't have to take out your calculator. Good. How are we doing that? And I would like to go into the very details of, of, of that message that we are giving here. Um, what you can do at Platit is you can, you can choose the whole range from pretreatment, cleaning, uh, to the latest PVD uh, accessories like quality management, for example. This is not a problem. But if you want to go down to, to that level here, uh, we need to have a starting point. And therefore, we strip down that whole turnkey solution package um, to three major points. Um, for us, the most important points. The PVD coding system, of course, this is the central part of every coding center, right? But without a great cleaning, you can have the best PVD coding system in the world. It will not work because you will basically have no adhesion to, to your tool when you use the PVD coding. And then in the end, your customers are asking, asking you to secure a certain quality level. So this is why we are 
including that as well here. So how does that look? Um, this is the machine which is the central part of the smart turnkey solution that we are offering uh, that helps you to enter the PVD coding business by yourself um, in a very, very easy way. We're working with two cathodes here. Um, as you can see here, so it's the same like the, the Pi 411, um, but a little bit like taken down to, to the very basics that you need. Um, this machine, um, and this is also very important for us, offers you a very high quality, which is comparable to the major players in Germany, in Europe, and the world in the job coding business. You can do all the codings with those two cathodes here, um, starting from a titanium nitride, going up to an aluminum chromium nitride. And even if you want to mix more than two materials, more than aluminum and chromium, you can still have an, an alloy target, which could be like titanium silicon. So also titanium, aluminum, silicon is, is possible with that machine. Um, this is the central part um, of, of this smart turnkey solution. And it's added up by a very comprehensive uh, cleaning system. There's a spray cleaning, there's an ultrasonic pre-cleaning, uh, and there's also a, a quality package which starts with a Rockwell tester. We are using that Rockwell tester to um, show our customers that we have a certain adhesion class um, that, your, that your coding has a good adhesion level towards your substrate and that if there is a failure that this is not based on adhesion. Of course, beside the Rockwell tester, you can also go uh, for a Carlo tester to have a, an in-depth analysis. You can have your own uh, quality control software that we are providing that helps you to provide like, really detailed um, reports to your customers. But again, if we talk about these 125,000 euro or Swiss francs, uh, and you would like to do it by yourself, this is really the starting point, offering you everything that you need from the very basics with a very high quality um, level towards your customers. The calculation that we made behind all this is this one. So what we were comparing is in the first three lines, you can see that here, job coding is expenses, and then also salaries for logistics and processing, which, which will add up to your total job coding expenses. Because even if you ship away tools, if, if you send them to, to someone uh, to, to code them for you, you still need an employee to take care of this, of the shipping, of all the documents, and, and so on. So this is what, what many, many people underestimate. And what we are taking into, into consideration here from our side is leasing, space rent, salaries, even maintenance. So we really put everything in there because it makes no sense for us to, to give you a message like that. And then in the end, the, the calculation is not, is not working, right? So um, the reason uh, for this table, why we are showing it in a very, very detailed way, is that we want you to understand that we really made our homework here and made a, a very comprehensive um, calculation. The message for this one, and we went with year one, year two, and year eight, this is based on the Pi triple one, one batch per day. And you can already see here that from the very first month that you are using that coding system, you already generate a positive cash flow in comparison to using a job coding service. In the second year, we believe that you made yourself a name in the market with your customers. They're sending more tools. So it will go up to, uh, to two uh, batches per day. This is, this is a realistic um, assumption in that case. And year eight, this is what we, what we chose in the end. This is the point where you are not paying any more leasing rate. And this is where it starts to make fun. So in the end, um, after eight years, when you, when you paid off uh, your PVD coding system, and, and we took an eight-year leasing here, because for, for smaller companies, um, this is quite reasonable. Um, this is really making fun here, because you are generating a high amount of cash flow. That being said, um, if we put that into another perspective, um, after two and a half to three years, um, when you take a look at the cumulative cash flow uh, statement of your company, um, your expenses will be lower than, than using a job coding service provider in the same period of time, both with the Pi triple one and the Pi 411, of course, based on the number of tools that you have, right? Um, another point is um, that this cash that you are paying um, is not paid to a job coding provider, you are paying it or investing it into your own company. Because all the, uh, the 100,000 or the 200,000 that you are spending per year, they are gone. This is like renting an apartment, uh, just to put that in, in, um, into perspective. Or in comparison, 
uh, to buy an apartment and investing it um, into yourself. Good, let's take a look at the cost because this is, this is also um, a frequently asked question. What is the cost of one PVD coating batch? And, and how, does it, how does it differentiate between fixed and variable cost? As you can see here, the major part here is the fixed cost. So this is, this is like depreciation, for example, your personal cost that you have. The variable costs are really, really low. This is why job coding providers also run half full batches, because if, if they only use the variable cost for that, for that batch, they still make money. So this is not a problem. Target cost is also uh, a point that everyone is asking always, like how high are the target costs? This should not be your major focus, because target costs are making only one eighth of the total cost that you have in running a PVD coding system. The, the point where you should focus are really um, the fixed cost. This is where you can, where you can um, generate an added value for yourself in taking, in taking those down. Good. Um, this, when, when you use a PVD coding system, it, it comes to certain scaling effects. When you, when you take a look at job coding providers, they're, they're using like big coding systems because with a higher number of tools uh, that you put into, into a large chamber, the cost per tool are going down because it's, it's not uh, proportionally growing the cost that you have and the number of tools. This is why with an increasing uh, chamber size, your cost per tool are going down. I would like to add one point here. What you see here is the Pi 411 and the Pi 411 Plus Turbo. The Echo version is the one with just the cathodes in the door. The Turbo version is the one with um, a central cathode to speed up the process. The investment, and you can see that here, by the way, on, on, on the picture, before I forget that, the investment for that system, for the Turbo version, is higher in comparison to the Echo version. But as you can run one more batch per day, at least, depending on the tools that you have, you see that here, the total cost that you have per batch are lower. Good. I mean, this is, this is interesting um, to, to see and to, to take a look at. But still, the question is, as soon as I started my own PVD coding business, I don't have my own R&D. I don't have my, my people in the beginning who are like expert in, experts in that field. And this is where we are helping you um, to gain an advantage over your competition. And it's always a combination of, of two different things. One is your tool or your component, things like surface, geometry, tool material, and so on, that, that you can optimize together with us. But then there's coming our know-how. And this is the composition of the coding, the structure, in general, how to improve the performance. And this is what we will talk about, talk about now. What we generally do is we are following, in a very basic idea, seven steps. Whenever we, we have a customer who says, look, I'm using that job coding provider. They are doing an aluminum chromium nitride coding, for example. I want to be better than that, and I want my own coding system. But I will only buy your system if I can be better than what I currently have, right? I don't have the know-how for that. You need to help me. And these are the seven steps. It, everything starts, of course, with initially discussing it taking a look at where's the benchmark, what can we do? And then sometimes this is already enough. We're doing a sampling with our own PVD uh, codings that we offer. If that is enough, we already made the customer happy, this is fine. If not, and you would like really to, to add more value to, to what, you, what you provide to your customers, we're following up with the next steps. And I would like to have a major focus on step three and four right now. One part of a PVD coding process is the etching. Uh, for those who don't know the etching um, in a PVD coding process, um, this is a step where you prepare the tool surface for the PVD coding that you have a very good adhesion to the substrate. And there's different um, possibilities to do um, etching in the PVD coding chamber. Uh, one is metal iron etching, one is argon etching, and one is LGD. This is a patented, a patented uh, version by Platite, but we will not talk about the details of the technology now. What I'm saying is that if you um, compare a standard aluminum chromium coating or standard PVD coating with an optimized version where you really optimize the, the etching process towards the, the application and towards the, the tool that you have, you can add a value with the same coating just with a comprehensive um, etching strategy. 
And this is what we're doing here uh, with our 3D edge indicator. The second point is flexibility. Everyone wants to be flexible, but, have, uh, but wants to have a very good solution at the same time. What we are doing, and I'm, I'm giving you the example of the, of the 411 here, what we are doing is you, um, giving you an example of having one installation, four different, ca four, four different cathodes that you have, um, titanium, aluminum, chromium, and in the middle, a, a TIB2 um, cathode. And with that four cathodes, without changing anything in the system, you have um, eight combinations that you can use. You can have 16 standard coatings that you can use without making any hardware change in the PVD coating system. And with all of that, you can go from a monoblock layer, a very simple PVD coating, uh, up, up to a nano layer um, with uh, very many different materials here. Good. Um, these are the steps three and four. Um, what we are doing is further optimization in terms of getting you a standard process. And in the end, we are combining all of those. And if you remember the, the selling propo propositions that we had, the last one was strong customer relationships. And I would like to talk about that now. This is the example that I'm using from company Prevema. Um, I think uh, for some people here, this company um, is well known in the tooling industry. They were asking us, they were using at the time a standard aluminum chromium nitride coating for their shaper cutter tools. Uh, the benchmark level that we had was 150 uh, parts to be produced. We went through all of these steps in our R&D together with the customer and came up with a solution that went beyond that average performance level. So this is really the, the story of us integrating the coding system together with a customer um, into, into his facility. The second story that I would like to share, and I'm, I'm very happy that, that he's in the audience right now, is um, the story of company DCC. Um, this is a job coding provider in, in Germany, and this company was started by, by one person. Uh, and he was basically um, an agent, a distributor. He was uh, every day uh, working with five different companies in the job coding field uh, together, having the tools in his car, um, driving them to his customers. He made up a certain revenue. And then in the end, he had a major challenge because he, had, he took the best codings from, from different companies, major players in the job coding industry, and he wanted to integrate everything into his own company. And that had to be done very, very fast, because otherwise he would have lost uh, his customers and what he built up over years. And we, we managed, together with him, um, to go through a fast-track insourcing process that within a very short period of time, he was able to um, provide all these codings that he, he used to get from different providers in, in Germany um, into his own company and was able to, to build up a company from being a sales agent to a real production company. And this is the story of DCC. Good. So what did we talk about uh, today? Smart turnkey solution. Um, this is the number that I would really would like you to keep in your head because this is the most important one. Um, I explained to you how the cash flow is adding up and that after, after two and a half years, you can already um, get back that investment from a, from a cumulative cash flow perspective. Um, and in the end, um, I explained to you a little bit about how we can ensure your performance plus in the PVD coding industry. And this is how I end my speech. Any questions? Yeah, thank you very much. Are there any questions from the audience? By the way, you can also do it in German. I'm, I'm a German speaker if, if, if you would like to do that. Yeah, but maybe we have international guests also. So maybe I can start with a question. Um, if I understood correctly, it is more or less a modular system. Uh, so even the machines, they can be adjusted to the requirements of the customers. And right. even if you are in such a leasing model, uh, they can somehow breathe so they can be adapted to uh, right. the ongoing requirements. Exactly. Like the, the, the main barrier for everyone is really the financial point of view. Those, those companies really uh, have a hard time in, in setting up the right financing solution. 
um, and at the same time have a high quality PV decoding system. So there's the opportunity to start with the very basics and then later when, uh, when they uh, have new fields, new segments, new customers, still be flexible with everything. And they can, they can add up in, in cleaning, they can add up in, in, in pre and post treatment, but also in the PVD technology itself. And, and this is the main idea behind it. Okay. And uh, if I also understood correctly, you also support your customers in developing new coating technologies um, that might become a little bit difficult. So if, if you have a new coating process development or coating development, yeah. uh, sooner or later you will get to the question about the intellectual property rights. So how do you behave in these cases? Um, actually, we, we have a very straightforward uh, process for that. So um, when we develop a coding for a customer um, and then say, okay, we do that as a joint project, for example, we, uh, and if that's wanted by the customer, we ensure the customer that we are not giving, giving it away to, to anyone else. Of course, we have the know-how in-house because we have the technicians, the engineers, and, and the R&D personnel. Um, but we're not giving it away to anyone else because it would be easy for us to go to the competition the next day and say, hey, look what we have. Um, but we also have, have contracts for that or just basically agree uh, on those. Okay, great. Um, I think nowadays we are always talking about digitization and Industry 4.0. Actually, yep. we are talking about Industry 4.0 since uh, more or less 10 years or more. Um, so how about your machines? Are they also connectable and uh, how are dealing with uh, digitization topics? Of course, of course. Like all the companies that, that we're working with, um, they have to um, add these systems also from, from, a, from an IT infrastructure point of view into their production because this is just a very basic request. So everything that you know on the market from, from a heat treatment perspective, from a tool producing perspective, this is really what we can offer as well with those coding systems. Perfect. Good. Are there any questions from the audience? Some more questions? Yes, please. There's a microphone coming to you. Does a machine generate any residual, industrial residual that you have to take care of? What do you mean with residual? Like oil, discardable, anything that no. has to be thrown away? No, it does not. No, the PVD coating itself does not produce any residual. Uh, you, you need to be careful when you go into stripping or cleaning. Of course, these are like chemical uh, processes. Um, so there you have residuals that you have to take care of. But this is something that we would show you as well. And what is the minimum power requirement of the startup machine? How many kilowatts are talking? Well, I will look that up. I don't have that in my mind. <laughs> Depends on the power you apply in your processes. Are there further, are there further questions? Then maybe afterwards, I can imagine that a lot of people come to you and ask further questions and. Hopefully, yes. This is, this is one remark that I probably forgot. This system that I, that I just presented, you can, you can see that at our booth. So, so we brought it with us, uh, that you can touch and feel it a little bit. Um, so you're happily welcome at our booth to, to take a look. And the booth is where? Um, Hall 10, B30. All right, perfect. Okay. Thank you very much again. Thank you, it was and fun. Thank you for listening. Okay, good, thank you.